Hello and welcome to the shop. I'm Jared and this is The Questionable Garage. And this is an incredibly exciting episode. A project car is done, stamped, going to its first event, which is always a big occasion. But what makes this one extra special, it is the original project car from when the channel was called Wrench Every Day with Andrew Howell way back in the past. Now, I'm not standing in front of the car right now because it deserves a really cool unveil montage. And I just wanna tell you what we're doing. First, you're gonna to get to see Earl Leaker in all of his glory. I love the way it came out. Then we are gonna road trip down to Gainesville, Florida, see our friend Kevin at KSR. We're gonna get him tuned and ready to go out and put on a show at Burnout Rivals Saturday at Cletus McFarland's Freedom Factory, his whole birthday bash weekend. But also mixed into all this exciting fun, I'm playing a little bit of spotter and coach for our friend Chris B is for build as he races in the Freedom 500 Friday night for that helicopter. It's gonna be an awesome, awesome episode and adventure. Glad you guys are here and I hope you're ready for some amazing fun because I really am. This, it's been a lot of work to get here. So let's not, let's not put it off any longer. Are you guys ready to see Earl? How, how do you think he came out? Comment, like, hope, hopefully you like it. I don't know, but here we go. A quick history lesson on Earl Leaker. Initially debuted with former host Andrew Howell January 18th, 2019. It was an in-process project car with a Nissan V8 already swapped in. After finding major damage, a second chassis was bought to serve as the new base for Earl Leaker. Foreshadowing, this chassis was even worse than the first one, but it is what Earl was built on today. Throughout the car's life, it's had a 2J swapped in, removed for another project, which left it with a Pac-Man Z wide body kit by KBD and no engine. Hanging out with Derek and independent Chevelle from the Vice Grip Garage, I decided I needed a big block burnout car in my life. So after five long years, I proudly present Earl Leaker. That's right, today's sponsor is Upside, a cashback app that helps, you know, take the little bit of sting out of the purchases you're needing to make every day. I am on the road quite a bit. I burn through a fair bit of fuel, and that is where Upside is amazing, and I kind of am kicking myself for not starting to use it earlier. What Upside does is allow you to open up the app and search for deals in your area, both on gas, groceries, and food. Once you find an offer near you that you want to take advantage of, you claim it, you go and use your debit card or credit card when you make your purchase, and you get cash back 
that easy. And you're dealing with real cash back, not a loyalty rewards program where after 100 gallons you can get a uh, custom upside embroidered hand towel. You're getting real cash deposited back into your checking account or with gift cards to Amazon, Starbucks, and several other partners. Another benefit of upside is uh, you can double dip. Let's just say your credit card happens to have some uh, cash back on the pump that doesn't affect the way upside works, so you can get uh, double the benefits. And finding an upside deal near you is incredibly easy. They are partnered with over 30,000 businesses and 25,000 gas stations across the continental 48 and DC. Now, if you're ready to give Upside a try, go ahead and scan the QR code on screen or click the link in the description box below. Get the Upside app, use code QUESTIONABLE, 25 cents extra cash back per gallon on your first purchase. Thank you to Upside for sponsoring this episode and uh, I'm gonna go use it to take a little bit of the sting out of the purchase of all the fuel I need this weekend. We got a lot of driving to do. Easy. Put your hazards on in the rain. That's the wrong way to drive. If I had my way, you would lose your driver's license. Because not only are you driving in the rain with hazards, you're just parked in the left lane. Bad. on a dyno and let me tell you what it's been going perfectly fine 
Actually, it has gone fairly well. It's just a tunnel ram and the twin throttle body injection on the Terminator. It's a thing we've had to work through. We also, because of how rich it was and fuel washed, we uh, had to change out that oil. So we got fresh oil, fresh plugs, and Kevin's been working a treat on it. But um, our one afternoon tune, it's getting dark. Kevin's got his family to go to. So I'll be back here in the morning and we'll talk to Kevin and uh, show you a little bit more. Uh, but you've already seen a whole lot of really cool power runs. Let's see how uh, cool. the next morning. Me. Well rested. Get it on the trailer. Now, obviously a lot of things happened and unlike the Ferrari episode where we spent a lot of time explaining after each individual poll, what we were doing, what we were figuring, a little bit of a thrash because not only did I bring Kevin something he hadn't quite seen from Holly and we had to learn it a little bit, um, fight tunnel ram air distribution, not the best for part drivability and just get everything happy with the car. Uh, he was also thrashing on something. Hi, Kevin. Howdy. Hi, guys. So I was just saying how uh, we didn't do our normal, like in between pole breakdowns, yep. explaining what happened because not only were you thrashing on my car, were you these guys were thrashing on this. Because <laughs> yeah, and the day before you got here, I worked all night to build this engine because uh, for anybody that doesn't watch my channel, I broke a bolt off in the crankshaft and had to build a new engine the day before Shooting me. Yeah, before Jared got here, so. But yeah. it just cranked. So like right after Jared's pulled off the dyno, like this one cranked. So we're gonna load this yeah. one on the dyno. What, what's really fun is you did the Gen 3 to Gen 4 conversion. Yep. And I was telling them both, the adapter harness for the cam sensor, I don't know why, you yeah. have to swap a bunch of wires, it still won't work, and then you swap them back and then it fires up. Swap them back to how it was. And then it's perfect. Box. But for whatever reason, out of the box, that never works. Yeah. I don't it's, get it. I don't get it, but it's... This sounds glorious. That 8 to 1. It's, that was the whole reason for it, too. So It, it sounds exotic and beautiful. Earl just sounds angry and just <laughs> pissed off. Yeah, something about when you, when you divide an engine, <laughs> they just don't sound smooth. Yeah. Like you divide all the bolts. Maybe a... Actually, a Viper sounds pretty good. And like anything with like more than eight cylinders, I think yeah. sounds good. Cause you got at least five on each yeah, side. Yeah, cause they're even exhaust pulses, but these where you have the two that fire yeah. 90 degrees and then the other one that fires 180, so. It's as close, I mean, it's basically the 180 degree headers. Yeah. But. Yeah, this thing, I mean, it, we can crank it up. You wanna oh, yeah. have Let's it on your it. channel? Yeah. I mean, it is like, I, I have a thing for Lexuses with LSs in them. I do have one of those. It's because the camera's on. The camera, oh, yeah. The rear switch is another one. Uh-oh. Oh, it's 
Yeah, the camera's, camera's on. on. Just put the jumper back on. I guess we gotta get a battery. Yeah. Oh. Uh, there, Dwayne. We'll just jump to. We'll we'll. No, actually, you can leave in all of that. Cause. <laughs> yeah, if you want a little bit longer video. <laughs> the great part was Kevin said, "Hey, go do a test rip real quick." And I was on my quote unquote show tires uh, for the pretty rims. We did finish off your show tires. Yeah, there's they're corded already. quite as demanding of earplugs as the big block but it's you know so i think you can agree ls's don't generally sound the greatest i would agree yeah like you really can't be a big block no. like well i'm not i'm not i wasn't i wasn't even going to the big block oh. i was just going to say this doesn't sound like an ls like no. the equal length the 180 degree headers the eight yeah. to ones well and when i built the header i did the firing order in the collector so they oh. actually, it's a circular firing order, so it swirls the exhaust all through. So, it, I mean, it, it sounds extremely exotic and it, not LS. Yep, so. it sounds kind of wild, so. Well, I could do the whole Tyler Hoovy thing where I just try to run out the garage and then you can play Car Wizard and drag me to the office to pay, but instead <laughs> I'm just gonna pay because we all have a whole lot more things to do Yep. and no time to do them. That is true, that is true. Make sure you check out KSR Performance, Appreciate YouTube. It. Uh, when it comes to tuning, I, if I'm not doing it myself, I've learned. I bring yeah. it to Kevin. Whenever you've got something that's really unique, you bring me in. So whenever it needs a little bit more help than the factory, like the, the wizard tunes. Yeah. Which there's always a little power to be gained over the wizard tune. Because that the wizard tunes are always just get them running. And get them safe. And yeah. And then, but then when you want to get it tweaked in, that's when we really come into play. Yeah. We'll I'll see you go. on uh, the track next, I guess. Sounds good. Yeah, hopefully. We'll be in the Freedom 500 tonight. We'll see what happens. Tomorrow night. Oh yeah, tomorrow night. You got yeah. one more night's sleep. I don't even know what day it is. So. <laughs> the, days are, the days are all mixed up. Yep, for sure. Factory Friday. Burnout is on Saturday, but I'm here to help our friend Chris. I am playing Spotter, and I'm going to kind of be his angel on his shoulder, or angel in the bleachers, giving him some advice, letting him know what's going on, and just everything else to hopefully coach him through. One big problem that happens at a lot of these races is the race comm radio doesn't always come through the clearest in cars. So I'll have two earbuds. I'll be listening to race control and I will be communicating to Chris, giving him, you know, whatever commands he's being told to do, if he's getting in trouble or if he should do something different, if he needs to catch another lapped car to unlap, be in the lucky dog position. It's a whole lot, but you're gonna do great, Chris. I hope so. And the good news is you don't have to take the helicopter. You were told yeah, this, this is a $100,000 check to go home literally with. literally a $100,000 check, but I'm so cheap and so stingy that I'm flying it to Chris Fix's house and we're selling it from there for one fifty. <laughs> I will not take one. <laughs> Garrett's going to charge you 50000 to fly it to 50, Chris's. 000, that's, that's only fair, to be honest. <laughs> and this is the car before the race. We'll see how much of this amazing livery survives to the end. At least 6% of it. It's about go time, Chris. You ready? Yep. I'm calling. We get a caution in the first five laps. 
I think it's two. Yeah. Let's Just hope, don't, let's, don't be you. Yeah, let's hope it's not me. <laughs> Side. I got a flat tire, I did not crash. I finished better than I qualified because of all the people that crashed out of the race. Yep. Well, as you can tell by the noise and the location, it is now Burnout Rivals Day. We are here with Earl. He looks amazing. We got Chris through that race safely yesterday. Didn't win it. I was kind of hoping he'd fly home in the helicopter, but he was safe in his Crown Vic race, finished with almost no marks on the car. So that's a win for him. And now it's up for me to win today. Earl's been a hit. I had him parked right where everyone was coming in. I hope maybe some of you got to see him in person. I've been running around for driver's meetings and haven't had a lot of time to meet people, which is a small bummer, but we're having just again, a great time. We are here, we're running rivals. And then again, because this is the questionable garage. We're going to hot lot the car. As soon as I'm done, we are ripping in and throwing those tires on, putting that seat in, and we're sending Brent from PFI Speed out because he, uh, they had to fly out. They didn't have time to drive Skitty on a trailer out from Colorado. The way the Cletus and Cars Burnout Rivals work as points follow the driver. So Brent's finish in Earl is gonna to count towards his season total when he gets back into Skiddy for the rest of the other events this year. So helping a friend out, Brent is a ripper. I am really excited to see what he can do. Uh, I'm really excited to see what I can do to make uh, Earl work. But if you don't remember, Brent's a little smaller than me, so yeah. A literal booster seat. It's quite comical. You ready to handle a big block car? I don't know. I'm sure gonna try. <laughs> I'm, I'm nervous, excited. <laughs> I'm, I'm super jazzed up. This is gonna be so much fun. Talk about fun. nervous and excited. I'm the one who owns the car. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, there's that too, and I want to make sure I keep it together for him. Nah. We got a nice solid bumper on the back. Oh, it's so big. There should be no reason to go by the wall using the whole pad to get all 40 points in driver skill. Yeah, that's true. We'll see what happens. I've got to watch you first and then I'll, I'll get your tips. <laughs> build nerves I'm always nervous going in front of the big crowd someone uh, made my shoot shrink it's definitely not that I maybe gained a few pounds needed a new one anyway got duct tape over the old logos let's send it check out the hater pipes on this thing
Pink, and then Brant's gonna run the same drive later on. So Jared Pink. Give it up for him. And thanks for the guest commentary by a guy. Put your hands together! Well, Brent, my my uh, my run didn't go great, did it? I mean, it, it looked good at moments. It's a new car, <laughs> new build. Figuring out the tune-up, you know what I mean? It's not like you got practice. Yeah, we had a lot of time on a dyno in a straight line on a street. That's not quite the same thing as what. An Earl whips violent. I'm it, about to find out. I call this solid. Though. I mean, sure, it's a booster seat. Questionable garage, questionable booster seats. You feel good? I feel good. I'm really laid back, you know. It's, it's <laughs> Can't like really different. see much. You see about the same that I do. Here's oh, the, yeah. the view from Earl. Like, yeah, that's, that's, that's what you see. That's what I see, yeah. 100%. That, that's what I saw too. So, um, I'm excited though. You know? we're, to give Earl a chance at popping tires, we're not changing them. Yep. You got about half of them left. It sounds and looks great. We will get them going insane soon. I'm excited to see you drive it. I know Me you can too. wheel I'm it. Fill this out. And... Yeah, we'll see what we can do. Play with the hand cutting brake if he behaves enough. Yeah. Which way's left? Which way? Uh, right? Towards you is right front. Yeah, this be right. Yeah, that's right. That's left. Now I will say this: my cooling system worked amazing, considering the fact that. I couldn't get them over 128 before the burnout, and I left the pit at 168, and then we had it here for a couple minutes, and I turned the key back on, and it only heats up to, like, what, 175? Yep. So, all right. Well, let's head over there. Do Earl proud for let's me, man. Let's see if we get Earl to go. It's one of those things, like I'm, the car looked good. It's still in one piece. I'm disappointed in myself because I want to put on an amazing show and I put on an okay show. Like it had amazing moments, but we'll get the wow factor. It's a brand new build tuned on a dyno, not quite the same a couple days ago. It'll come together. We got two more events for sure that I'm making it this year. So we'll get it. They got a tuning issue. You're good. You're good. Dang. I mean, the burnout pad is just sending them home right now, guys. Well, we did that fuel pressure change to try to fix the tip in. Both Brent and Jamie thought it might be on the lean side. So we went ahead and tried cranking the 60 PSI. And Earl didn't even want to come up and get the tires going. So. It seems not more fuel pressure, not less fuel pressure. 
Uh, Kevin and I, as we were wrapping up tuning, were talking about port injection. That's where we're going to have a fuel injector at the back of each intake valve. Instead of it being all the way at the top of the throttle bodies, they're not distributing well through that tunnel ram, and it's just not happy. Car's still together. Everything runs. The tune, we're just, we're fighting it. Kevin and I fought it on the dyno. We're fighting it here. I got, I think, four weeks before Indy to pair, pull it partway down, go through, modify this manifold, get port injection on it, and get it all back together. It's still together. No tires popped. RO looks absolutely amazing, so I should count all those as wins, but I want to put on a good show. And looking good isn't the entire part of being, you know, a good showman. You got to pop the tires once in a while. We well, didn't do it, but... We got a car to put on the trailer. We got a car we can improve. And we'll come back stronger. So, remember when I said Earl's done? Project cars are never done. You just keep finding things you got to do to make them better. I, I don't have a witty outro, so I really hope you enjoyed the adventure. Earl is so close to being a burnout winning machine. We're going to get him there. We're going to have a good time. And you get to come along for all of it. So, Jared reminding you guys to always make questionable choices. And uh, port fuel injection is the way to go on your burnout cars. We'll see you.